Okay, let's move on to the economy now. The RBA decided to keep rates on hold at 4.35%. This is the final board meeting of the year. Meanwhile, the figures we've seen today, the GDP lifting by just 0.2% in the September quarter. Andrew, are you worried that inflation is become stickier in Australia than the rest of the world? Look, I think the two pieces of information that we've had over the last couple of days in relation to the economy complement each other. Uh, we had slowing economic growth today, still positive, but slowing, and slowing as expected in line with higher interest rates and the impact of global uncertainty on Australia. And that slowing economy is enabling the RBA to reduce the rate at which they are increasing interest rates, which will be welcome for many Australians suffering with higher cost of living and increased mortgage repayments. But Australians should feel confident that the Australian economy is strong. I mean, if, you had, if we'd been sitting here two years ago, we would not have expected that Australian unemployment today would have a three in front of it, one of the lowest unemployment rates in Australia's history. And we probably wouldn't have expected that Labor would have been able to deliver the first budget surplus in 14 years. So Australians should be confident that, that, that our economy is strong and we're doing better than most of our peers in the face of the inflation challenge that we inherited and the global uncertainties bearing down on us. Well, Shari, if I could just respond. I mean, the RBA governor's clear. We do have homegrown inflation. You can't uh, blame overseas factors anymore. We're in an economic crisis, a GDP per capita recession. We've had incomes falling. Uh, by 6.6%, taxes have gone up 27%, mortgages have tripled, prices are up 9% and Australians are being crushed and smashed economically at the moment as they head to Christmas. And this government, instead of focusing on that in the last six months and doing something to cut their spending, they've poured you know, $450 million into their failed voice referendum and they've been more interested in swanning around with celebrities than actually getting to the nub of the thing that is really hurting Australians and that is this economic crisis that people are feeling. I mean, Andrew's got all the numbers, but the fact is if you are in households in suburbs today, they are mm. feeling smashed and for good reason. Yeah, there's no question cost of living crisis continues to bite. Bridget McKenzie, Andrew Charlton, thank you both so much.